Let's talk Saudi Arabia now. Gary Dugan is Chief Investment Officer at Emirates MBD. He's with us in the studio. Morning, Gary. Good morning. Let's talk Saudi Arabia. You were there the day that uh, Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman announced these seismic reforms in the Saudi government. How did it feel in Saudi at the time? It felt pretty special, to be honest. I mean, I've, I've never seen such a kind of air of tension and then spontaneous applause when he announced some parts of his reform. Uh, amongst some of my colleagues who were watching on a big screen in one of the big hotels and it was it was like this was something very very special and something quite dramatic in terms of reform this is i guess with uh, the professional community or the investment community who look at these reforms and say yes this is sensible economics and we studied this stuff for our mbas and he's doing the right thing what kind of reaction though is it getting in rural parts of the eastern province that's what really matters isn't it it is and i i have to say that um I would say more broadly across the region, there's clearly still some scepticism as to whether the authorities will be able to deliver, whether they can take the whole country with them. And, and, yeah, there's been a few negatives in the sense that um, some of the appointments made in recent days appear to be just the central province that is giving the kind of key appointments, getting the key appointments and not the uh, more far reaches of Saudi Arabia. But these are just, I think, passing issues. I think at, at the core of this, this is a very big country in this region that is committed to these reforms. And I've been very impressed that it wasn't just that one speech, but as we've seen subsequently, a whole series of changes, including I think now 50 decrees in just a few weeks, pointing the country in a different direction. Saudi Aramco is at the heart of many of these reforms, putting it in a new sovereign wealth fund. Georgia and I were talking about this earlier on. It's one of our top stories, isn't it, George? Just recap the details there about increasing oil output. I mean, just extraordinary plans they've got to, to hike up oil production, isn't it? By uh, about a third from one of the fields. Yeah, it really is. I mean, they, they, they've insisted that there's rising demand, that they're going to keep on expanding. One oil field going up by 33% in the next couple of weeks to one million barrels a day. And they're also going to double natural gas production over the next decade. Isn't that a bit counterintuitive in a, in days when ultimately at the moment the demand for oil is going down and yes it's gone up a little bit but not you know not like it was before. I think they would still say that they're taking the longer term view. Uh, they're committed to their customers. They go unlike the rest of the world. They're going to continue to invest in the sector. And I think also, if you're coming up for an IPO, you've clearly got to put a lot of positives behind you as you come up to the pricing of that. And I think this is part of their ploy. We're committed to our business. We're investing in our business. And hence, you should buy our shares. So what do we buy? You're the chief investment officer, aren't you? So you, you, you no look... No pressure. Yeah, exactly. Just give me a, give, mail me a list. Well, where, where, how, do we, how do we play this as investors, Gary? Or, or do we sit on the sidelines and wait and watch? Well, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Um, this is not a story for the next uh, three to six months. If the oil price falls, undoubtedly the Saudi equity market would follow that. Not that we're expecting a dramatic downside, even with this extra production. But I do think it's starting to give this region a bigger, bigger, a much bigger footprint in the global capital markets. Because it's not just what we've seen in Saudi Arabia in the last uh, few weeks and the commitment of that country to really punch its weight now in capital markets with far bigger equity market and a growing Sukuk and bond market. But it's the issuance that we're seeing across the region now. More companies committing to go to IPO over the next one to two years. And I think they're, I would call it less price sensitive than we've been seeing in the past where IPOs only came at the top of the market. So we could have a profoundly bigger capital market in this region one to two years from now. And that puts us on the map and that gets foreign investment coming into this country and others. So what type of companies are you you seeing looking to have an IPO in the next few years? You know, it's it's very, very broad. We're seeing some of the property developers. We're seeing probably smaller financial institutions. We're seeing some of the um, kind of, I would call, bellwether food companies, distribution companies. So this is going to give, uh, firstly, uh, it kind of starts to dilute down the very heavy weighting towards oil and financials that we find in some of these sectors. And secondly, it gives people more of that global GDP. You know, countries um, such as the UAE growing at three, three and a half percent, you couldn't always buy that in the stock market market. And I think that is going to be more available as we go through the next few years. So wait and watch or are there opportunities here today now? Wait and watch. I think uh, we've had a bit of a run up um, on the back of the enthusiasm with the oil price striking above $40. But on any weakness, I feel much more confident now that this is a better quality investment that's going to have a continued flow of good news.
Just before we let you go, Gary, leaving Saudi aside for the moment, um, can you settle an argument? between the, myself and a few of our listeners this morning. What it is, it's about profit margins, um, and it's about the Emirates profit margin. I'm not going to ask you to analyse Emirates results. They, that's, that, that apple is too close to the tree. But generally speaking, I was talking earlier on about the profit margin at Emirates Group being 8.4%. Is that a slim profit margin or a healthy profit margin? Is there enough in that to start discounting fares? And I suggested that's not a very big profit margin. Even though it's record profits for Emirates, it's not particularly big profit margin. But a few people have written in saying most construction companies in Dubai would bite your hand off for 8%. And uh, Grant writes in, Richard, as a small business advisor, I can tell you that there are a number of businesses in the UAE that would love to be earning an 8.4% profit margin right now. So just dispassionately, as a chief investment officer at Acme Company, if you look at an 8.4% profit margin, what do you see? I think for the industry they're in, it's a very good profit margin. Uh, for the world we're in, it's a good profit margin because uh, everyone's under pressure with uh, relatively high costs and no growth. So I think they've managed it well considering all the forces of uh, a very volatile oil price which dictates um, what their revenues are going to look like and also clearly around the world um, an industry that's been under some pressure. So essentially what you're saying is that our listeners are right and I'm wrong. Sadly so, Richard. <laughs> it was ever thus. <laughs> Gary, thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning. Thank Always you. enjoy getting your thoughts. Uh, Gary Dugan is Chief Investment Officer at Emirates MVD.